back in Grand Forks, huh? Somehow or other, my dad got his sermons done by Saturday morning. Amazing thing. And he would come home then about Saturday, 1 o'clock, and we had a ritual. Four boys. We were the oldest, which means from 10 till about 5. We would go into his bedroom. <clears throat> and we had a contract, which was to say that the boys did something first before the father told the story. It was an exchange. Dad would stretch himself out face down on the bed, and we would give him a back rub. That was our job, all four of us, little baby feet pounding on his back, scratching and rubbing, and he would uh, groan. Now, my father didn't laugh a whole lot. But if you snuck up on him when he didn't have shoes on and touched the bottom of his feet, you could make him laugh. <laughs> that's mercy. That's love, and that's part of the whole point of this thing. It's the communication. Seems to me that always on those Saturday afternoons the sun was shining in through the bedroom window and they had Venetian blinds which cut the light into blocks which poop, 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 fell on the bed. And the dust motes went up so that the light itself was blocks. My father's smell was in his pillow. <clears throat> All these sensory things. I'm talking about experience. My mother's smell was in the kid gloves she kept in her drawer, her top drawer in the dresser. That was romance. When she put that on, she was going out into the night with beauty and darkness and light. When we were done doing our part of it, Dad would turn over on his back and, whew, we would get a whiff of his smell then. And we would clap up beside him, and he would say, once upon a time, Ambrose. He told us stories about this knight, this young knight who wore rusty armor and who fought against a dragon with a tail. And there was always marvelous fights that took place, and they were not clean, they were messy fights. You know, you drop tin cans here and there, and, and you howl, and I would hear my father's voice in his chest, almost a bellows in his chest. And he involved all my senses and my intellect trying to figure out the plot and my emotions and my feeling. And you see, all of that, that storytelling, contained love. The storytelling contained things that had no words besides the actual experience of being in that story itself. All involved and all important, so important, one day, Saturday, uh, Dad came home, and I ran up to him, and I said, are you going to tell us a story about, uh, about what's his name, I said? And he said, what's his name? And blew it right out of my mind. He said, well, until you can tell me the name, I can't tell you a story. <laughs> oh, what am I missing? How important. I went to my brother Paul, and I said, Paul, do you remember, do you remember the, the name of the fellow Dad tells us that blew it out of Paul's head, too? Oh! We said, well, it starts with a B. I remember we really tried to make it Bruce, Bombast. And then we were sitting on a Saturday morning. We had a console radio in those days, this big, with a little dial in front, but slats, you know, that went to, it was a piece of furniture in those days. And Paul and I would sit with our backs against the slats, and we were listening to Big John and Sparky in those days. And all of a sudden, Paul said, Ambrose. And I said, Ambrose. And when he came home, I ran to Dad, and I said, Ambrose. And Dad said, Ambrose. <laughs> this was so important that when I went to the seminary and they told us that Ambrose was a fourth century saint responsible for the conversion of Augustus, Augustine, I said, no. Ambrose was a young knight. Well, I didn't, but you know what I'm saying. How much is born in the story? What mercy of God? What a collection of love and relationships all the way back, generation upon generation, to the beginning of time. I will tell some story for my mother and her funeral 
I don't know what. It certainly won't involve everything. And it shan't be understood by everyone. But it's an invitation. It's an invitation for people to enter into this experience. To experience something of the grand sequence of confession and forgiveness. And always at the center of these things, the only power that allows that to happen is the Spirit of Christ. Tell the story. Tell the old, old story. I think my father forgot that. He might just as well have told us a story about, oh, let me see. Once upon a time, Abraham. Once upon a time, Jesus. Once upon a time, resurrection. <laughs>